we are looking at minimum cost spanning trees and we saw one strategy the prim strategy which tries to incrementally grow a tree starting with one vertex or one edge until you get an overall tree which is minimum cost. The other strategy is called Kruskal's algorithm. So remember that we are working with weighted undirected graphs. So we have a weight function associating a number with every edge and we assume the graph is connected and we want to find the minimum cost spanning tree which connects all the vertices in V. So in Kruskal's algorithm what we do is we start with all the vertices disconnected forming n components and then we try to merge components right. We try to connect components by the smallest edge that we have which connects two components to it. So let us do an example and then we will do it in more detail. So this is our familiar example right. So here the first thing that we do in Kruskal's algorithm is to sort the edges in ascending order right. So we will sort the edges in ascending order and then we start with the smallest edge. So the smallest edge in this case, so initially we are imagining that we have this disconnected graph consisting of these five vertices which are just sitting in isolation. Then we bring this one edge in and we create this component. Right? So now we have four components, one component has the vertices 1 and 3 and the other three are these isolated components. Now in Prim's algorithm you would take this component and you would extend the tree. In Kruskal's algorithm you just take the smallest edge which connects two components and makes them into a larger component. So in this case I jump from 6 to 8, that is the next smallest edge and it is connecting two kind of components which are separate at the moment. So I am allowed to add that and I get now these two components I have uh, rather three components I have now constructed this kind of a graph where I have 0 separate 1 and 3 and then 2 and 4 right. Now what is the next one? The next one is this 10 right. So it will connect 0 to 1 so I am allowed to add it right. So now I have this kind of a situation. So I still have overall a disconnected graph, it is not a tree yet okay and now I have to decide what to do. So I have processed 6, 8 and 10. So the next vertex in ascending order of cost is 18. So what I discover now is that when I try to add 18, it does not connect two different components, it connects two vert vertices in the same component. So it forms a cycle and this is not good. So Kruskal's algorithm says include an edge if it does not create a cycle. So 18 gets discarded right. So we do not take the edge 0, 3 and we proceed to the next edge. So the next edge in, in ascending order is 20. So we add that right and we have found essentially the same spanning tree we found from Prim's algorithm but in a different sequence. Remember in Prim's algorithm we first added 6 then we added 10 then we added 20 and finally we added 8 because we could only add 8 when we reached one endpoint of 8 that namely this vertex 2 whereas in Kruskal's algorithm we added 8 up front and we create these disjoint components and as we go along these components kind of merge together and they form a tree right. So here is a little bit more formal definition of Kruskal's algorithm. So we have assumed that our edges are arranged in this ascending order right. So E0 is the smallest edge which should be E1 right E0 E1 up to Em-1. So I sorted in ascending order by weight and now what you do is you keep track of like we did in Prim's algorithm, we keep track of the set of edges that we have added right and implicitly the set of edges also tells us what are the components. So you can if you are trying to uh, actually write this as code, you will actually keep track of the components also which is a little bit tedious when you are programming this but mathematically if we know the edges then we can compute the components by just doing kind of uh, the reachability on each component and finding out which the components are. So initially the set of edges is empty and now we scan all the edges from the smallest edge to the largest edge and if adding it creates a loop or a cycle we skip it otherwise we add it right. So here is a little bit more complicated graph to try and see how this works right. So these are my uh, 0 to 6 or so 7 vertices and I have some 8 edges in them right. So I sort the edges right. So this is my smallest edge right and this is my second smallest edge and so on and this is my third. So now I have 3 edges which are of equal size. Right. So these three edges. So I fix some ordering. We discussed that if you have equal uh, weight edges, you just fix some ordering on them. So I have fixed an ordering which is basically based on the lexicographic ordering of the endpoints. So 0, 1 comes before 4, 5 because 0 comes before 4 and 4, 5 comes before 4, 6 because 5 comes before 6. So I have just chosen this ordering. You can choose any ordering. Right. So you fix an order in which you are going to process the vertices such that it is an ascending order. If the equal vertices, you choose some uh, 
some way to group them so that they are in some fixed order. So initially now my edge set is empty right and I pick the smallest one. So now I process it from smallest to largest. So I pick the smallest one no problem it does not create any uh, I have got I have got no components before this. So I now have created one component right. So I can add it and I have 5, 6 as a tree edge. Now I look at the next edge. So remember this is useful that I have already sorted it. So I know that the next edge I have to process is 1, 2. So I look at 1, 2. Again no problem it connects two different components so I am fine. Okay. Then I look at 0, 1. 0, 1 also connects two different components so I am fine. Right. So now I have come to the 10 block. So now I look at 4, 5, 4, 5 also connects two different things because 5, 6 was one component and 4 was one component I am fine. Now I come to 4, 6 and 4, 6 now is actually lying within a component. So I cannot use 4, 6 so I skip it. So I do not add it to the edge set. So I leave the edge set, edge set unchanged. Now I come to 0, 2 same problem, 0, 2 is connecting two vertices which are already in the same component. So I have to skip that also. So now after 18 I go to 20 right and that is not a problem because it takes this component and this component and connects them they are two different components. So I add that and finally that edge 70 which connects 2 to 3 is added right. So this is how Kruskal's algorithm works. So the reason that Kruskal's algorithm is correct is exactly the same reason that Prim's algorithm is correct is because of this minimum separator lemma. Remember what the minimum separator lemma says if I take my graph and I split it so that there are some vertices on this side and some on the other side right. There are these partition into u and w no matter how I partition it. If I then sit and look at all the edges which cross right and then among these if I pick the smallest one then that smallest one must belong to every MCST right. So in our thing the edges that we have found so far in Petruskal's algorithm partition the vertices into connected components. So now initially each vertex is in a separate component and when I add an edge u w it merges the components of u and w right. So basically the thing is that if I am keeping track of which uh, which vertices are in the same component and I can do that incrementally right when I add an edge I can grow the component I can say the component containing u now contains w also so it is not a problem right. So I do this as I go along so if I discover that the edge I want to add actually falls within a component both endpoints are the same component it will then form a cycle and then I discard it. On the other hand if it connects two different components then we can apply this lemma to argue that what we are doing is correct because we look at the component containing the starting point. So let capital U be the component containing small u right and let W be the rest. Now W has because we are assuming that U and W are in U small u and small w are in different components I have U which contains the small u and this W which is the rest which contains small w. Now we are processing these edges in ascending order right. So since these are in different components I have not yet connected these two. So I have not found any edges yet between 0 between capital U and capital W because if I had found them I would have already connected these components right. So the reason they are not connected is because I have not found them yet. But among the edges which I have not looked at the edge I am looking at right now is the smallest one because I am doing it in ascending order right. So, so this forms a partition and we are forming this uh, we are scanning in ascending order. So this edge that I am looking at must be the smallest edge connecting capital U to capital W. So it satisfies this property of this minimum separator right. It is a minimum separator of capital U and capital W. So what Kruskal's algorithm would do would say pick it up and add it and it is correct because the separator says that any such edge which is the minimum separator between this partition and that partition must be there in every MCST okay. So Kruskal's algorithm is correct for the same reason that Prim's algorithm is correct because of this minimum separator lemma. So the difference between Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm is basically Kruskal's algorithm kind of assembles this tree bottom up right. So it takes all these disconnected things and then it goes around putting them together whereas a, a Prim's algorithm starts somewhere and it grows the tree gradually to cover the whole thing right. So they have different strategies right but both of them owe their correctness to that one lemma which says that whenever I partition the vertices into two disjoint sets the smallest edge connecting these two partitions must be there in every MCST. Now if there are repeated edge weights then 
we already saw in the unweighted case that there are many spanning trees. If there are repeated the same weight repeats then we may not get a unique spanning tree right. So, for instance supposing I take a very simple graph which is just this 3 vertex graph and I put weight 3 here, here and here right. Then any of these would be a spanning tree right I could take this pair of edges or I could take this pair of edges or I could take this pair of edges. So, all of them would be minimum cost spanning trees. And where it comes in our algorithm is when we say choose the minimum cost edge remember that we have said that we might actually have to specify it as some f comma j and so on. So, the ordering that we choose will decide which one will get picked up. So, that is why we get many different choices right. So, here you can see that this uh, triangle on 4 vertices and 3 vertices has actually 3 spanning trees. If I do a more complicated thing for instance supposing I take a square with the four two diagonals. Then what are the spanning trees? Well, the spanning trees, so there are some obvious spanning trees like this one right. So, this is a spanning tree when I take three edges around four vertices so a spanning tree will have three edges, but these are also spanning trees two edges and a diagonal right. This z is also a spanning tree two edges and the diagonal connecting them. How many of them are there? Well, there are four ways of going around the outside I can have this, I can have this, I can have this. Then there are some four ways of choosing the corner to include and then the z can also be in many different ways right. So, many different orientations. So, you can see that with 6 edges I can get uh, an enormous number of spanning trees. So, in general right different choices lead to different spanning trees and if there are uh, not unique edge weights then I could get a very large number of spanning trees. So, depending on how I have chosen to order these equal edge weights Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's algorithm will pick one particular one out of these. Right. It will not give you all of them, it will give you one of them. In And if they are disjoint in the sense that uh, not disjoint, if they are distinct that is if all the edge weights are different then using the minimum separator lemma you can argue that every choice on Prim's algorithm is forced, every choice in Kruskal's algorithm is forced and they will give you exactly the same spanning tree. So, as long as the edge weights are disjoint it does not matter whether you use Prim or Kruskal you will get the same spanning tree. But if the edge weights repeat then depending on how you choose to order the vertices the two algorithms might produce different spanning trees with the same minimum cost, but different sets of edges. So, keep that in mind.